Welcome to our review on identifying organisms. So the first thing we need to actually think about is how we're going to do this. You've got a bunch of organisms in front of you, you need to know what they actually are. So the way we do this in biology is by using something called a key. So what we're going to do there is look at the characteristics those organisms have and by using one of two types of key we can then identify them. And the two types of key that we use in biology are spider keys or numbered keys. The spider key then, first of all, is set out with a series of questions you're going to answer and follow the arrows. So if you had a plant sitting in front of you, then obviously we'd have to have a look at its leaves first of all based on this key. If it had broad leaves, we'd go to the left. Then we'd have a look at the edge of the leaves. If it had a smooth edge to it, then that takes us to the daisy. So all you do is literally look at the picture on the exam paper and follow through each of those questions just following where the arrow points until you reach the end point and then you write that name into the little answer space. The second type of key is the numbered key. So it's exactly the same principle as our spider key, just set out in a different way. So here you can see we've got four different questions and we've got two possible answers. So first one, if our leaves are narrow, it tells us to go to question two. So we go to question two, and if we had bell-like flowers, then we'd have a bluebell. So again, all we do is look at the picture on the exam paper, read the actual options that we have, and then follow where it tells us to go. When we reach the final name, write it on the answer space. First thing we need to understand here then is what an ecosystem actually is. So whenever we're talking about an ecosystem, we're not only referring to the living things in that area, but how they interact with each other and those physical conditions around them. All of that together makes up one ecosystem. Now, an example of our natural ecosystems, which are the ones that occur without any human interactions, things like our woodlands and lakes. And what we find there are that they will have what's called a high biodiversity. Now this means that they've got lots of different species present. So anything that has a high biodiversity has a large number of different species present. We also have artificial ecosystems. Now these are the ones that us as humans have created. So these would be things like our fish farms, our home gardens, anything like that that we have physically created is an artificial ecosystem. And what we tend to find is that they have a lower biodiversity than our natural ecosystems because we're going to be selecting only certain things to put in them. Last thing we need to consider is this idea of zonation. So what we do here is we'd use a transect line to record the distribution across a habitat like a beach or across a field and what we would then do is we'd actually look to see where different organisms were found. So what we'd actually identify at that point is that different species will live in different zones. And that's what zonation actually is, that different species live in different areas of that given habitat. Now, what we can actually use is a special type of diagram called a kite diagram to show this zonation. So the example I've given you down there is looking at dandelions and grasses. On the x-axis, we've got the distance from our start point. And then on the y-axis, that's going to represent our population size of each species. So what we do is we've got a midpoint, which is the black line running horizontally. And then at that first point, five meters, for example, we would lay a quadrat and then count how many dandelions are present and how much grass is present. If we had, say, 10 dandelions, you would place five below that midline and five above it and put a little cross. And you do that right the way along at any of our sample points for the two different species. And then you just join the dots to create that very distinctive shape. And that obviously just tells us what the distributions are like of those different species within that one habitat, which is their zonation.